Hey guys, Matthew, and welcome to episode number five of the Casual Exile series. Today, as natural progression goes, now that you've chosen your character, you know how to level it quicker, you're prepared, you've prepared yourself to get to maps, and you know which elite mechanics you should and shouldn't encounter and interact with, we are going to talk about how to progress your atlas. Now, I actually have a video about how to speedrun all 32 watchstones for the conquerors of the atlas and how to get to Cyrus and all that as fast as possible. I have to give credit to dbrody6 uh, for his Reddit post because he's the first person to publicly, uh, I, I believe, talk about this Reddit, uh, or sorry, this strategy entirely. Uh, so all credit goes to him. I just rehash his Reddit post in a video and try to make it as easy to understand as possible. So I'm not really going to talk about Atlas progression uh, in in the in in terms of the how to actually you know get your stones. I want to focus more on investment in your maps and also uh, master missions and how to use them. So first off, I guess we'll start off with. Uh, how much to invest in your maps what's a reasonable amount of investment that you should put in your maps to make sure that you're always progressing um so when it comes to white maps i would always always use an orb of alchemy okay so whenever you roll a map basically it's like any other item in the game a rare item will always at least have four stats two suffixes two prefixes right if we look on here we have the nemesis and the corrupted as well as the elemental uh ailments and then the elemental equilibrium four mods now, this can go up to 6 mods, and when corrupted, 8 mods. So, the reason why we would all, always, always, always want to use an Orb of Alchemy on a map, and never transmute, even on a T1 map, is because the only thing that affects map drop in Path of Exile is the item quantity that you see on the map itself. More mods on your map, more modifiers, more affixes, means more quantity, more pack size, and therefore big, uh, better sustain. But not only better sustained, it also means more loot uh, dropping from the monsters because there's more monsters dropping more things, which all all together compounds to make to 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 more currency per map. Now, the reason why I would even alchemy a T1 map versus a transmute is because even if sustaining my maps in T1 maps is not very difficult, so I could use a tr uh, a transmute and easily still go up in tier in progress in the early stage of the Atlas. The reason I would still use alchemies is because it's still going to drop me more rare items, especially jewelry, which is going to be paramount for my chaos recipe bottleneck. So always, always, always alchemy, even T1 maps. The same thing is going to apply to yellow maps, always alchemy. The difference here is that we are going to um, start using Val Orbs. Now Val Orbs, I've documented here, have basically a few different outcomes. So I'm going to go ahead and run you down through what these different outcomes are and the advantage or disadvantage real, real quick. So first thing that can happen is that your, mod is, your map is going to turn into an 8 mod map. Now remember what I said, 3 prefixes, 3 suffixes for a rare item in this game, but whenever you throw an alchemy at a map, or sorry, a Val Orb at a map, it can turn into an 8 mod map, which means even significantly more quantity, therefore more juice, more chaos recipe items but overall better sustain for your mapping as well uh, and this is basically just going to improve your odds of sustaining maps and going up in map tiers as well next it can actually change the map into a map of the following tiers so if you're running a t8 and you val it it can become a t9 this is literally just a free plus one in your atlas tier which is fantastic when it comes to trying to get through the atlas as fast as possible Next, the map can go unidentified. If the map goes unidentified, technically nothing really happens to it. You only just get a uh, quantity bonus. I believe it's 20 or 30% uh, more quantity on your map, which, remember what I said at the start of the video, that means more map sustain, but also just overall more loot from the map. So there's basically no disadvantage here. Next, the map can reroll into the same map with different mods. Now, this can be good because it can mean you turn an 80 quantity map into a 120 quantity map, but it, it can also mean that you turn it into a 60 quantity map. So this is where there's not really, like overall, it's not really going to give you anything, but it's not really going to remove anything from you in, 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 the, um, in the grand scheme of things. But... This is where the issue happens here. Whenever the map does change, it can also change into a map with a mod which your your character is not capable to run. For example, L Reflect or Cannot Regen, or stuff like that. In that case, the map is basically just a loss. But in my opinion, there are so many upsides to valuing your map that this small little downside doesn't really matter. Especially considering that if you're playing in Trade League, 
those maps are still going to be sellable to some people at the price of a regular non-rolled map, but it's actually already rolled. So people will buy pre-rolled maps so that they don't have to roll them and they already know exactly what's on the map. Uh, so you're going to make some of that money back anyways, which means even less of a disadvantage. And finally, nothing happened. You wasted a Valorb. But did you really waste a Valorb? Not really, because when you Val a map, uh, the, the boss of the map is going to be corrupted, and corrupted boss can drop some uh, fragments. Now, of course, uh, sacrifice fragments are not the most expensive thing in the world, but at the start of the league, since there are people farming at Ziri, they do have a little bit of value. Again, though, it's pretty much just a loss, but realistically, like I said, there's so many upsides that I don't think this these tiny little downsides really matter whatsoever, uh, considering uh, the advantages that you get from valing your maps, especially just in terms of raw map that you're going to be getting back, and of course, the atlas progression. Now, what about red maps? So for red maps, I actually do the exact same thing, but I'm going to chisel them first. Now, if I was to chisel a already rare map, it would take me 20 chisels to get it to 20% quantity. The quantity will affect the rare, uh, sorry, the quality of the map basically is a direct addition to your item quantity on the map. Therefore, chisels, um, chisels are actually one of the only thing you can use in this game to increase map drops returns. If you're not chiseling your red maps and you're not, you know, getting returns, that's probably why. So use chisels on a white map. And what I mean white is not like the white tier, like a red tier map, but that has nothing on it, like a, uh, a, a normal one. That's going to take you only four chisels to take it to 20 quality because it's 5% quantity uh, per chisel. Then you're going to arc it and then you're going to val it. Now, if the map is really, really bad and we're talking about higher end maps, you could also alchemy it and if it's like just overall horrible you could also scour and alchemy again until you get a map that has a decent amount of juice and then throw it on a valorb to you know take it a step further because there's no reason not to unidentified maps could turn into an eight mod could nothing happen overall it's just really good to do so that's pretty much why how i go in terms of investment and that's it okay now when I'm i don't use any of the xana map mods during my progression of the atlas at all even for example throwing three chaos for fortune favors the brave in a yellow map is a complete waste of currency why is that well three chaos if we were to look at it in terms of chaos recipe is one and a half chaos recipe you're not going to get one and a half chaos recipe out of putting this on your map you're also not really going to get a whole lot in terms of value from any of these even beyond even legions in lower tier maps the reason for that is that when you're progressing the atlas your character typically is not going to be incredibly good at either single target or clearing or maybe it's going to be good at one but not the other most builds don't have the full package during the leveling portion and progressing portion they're going to struggle with one thing at least so even if you were to get a legion chances are you're not going to be able to full clear the legion or beyond it chances are you don't have enough single target to kill the bosses right like there's always going to be some things that are you're not your build is not really going to be capable of interacting efficiently with at that stage so ignoring this whole thing entirely in my opinion is the better way to go until you reach those high tier red maps now once you get to the end game for example right now i'm doing fractured delirious maps at this point, throwing Beyond is pretty much mandatory because the amount of extra juice that I get from adding Beyond on my map is substantial. It's huge. Okay. So, otherwise, we also don't use Sextants during the uh, progression portion of the Atlas. Again, it's just a waste of currency. Even if they're cheap, and they are, to be honest, they are, uh, they don't add a whole lot to your map in terms uh, of anything that's like required to progress. If if it, if we were still at the point where the game had very minimal lead mechanics and very minimal added monsters to your map and stuff, sextants used to be almost necessary in even yellow or early red maps to try to progress, but we're not at that point anymore. There's so many different lead mechanics adding tons and tons of monsters to your map that you don't need to even think about using sextants before the end game. Sell them and buy more maps if required, or... Uh, keep them and stockpile them until you will need them, uh, you know, later on. Same goes for scarabs. I don't use any scarabs or any sort of um, sacrifice fragments or any sort of fragments, nothing like that in the progression of my atlas. It's just not worth the money. 
even if it's only like a chaos for a rusted breach scarab chances are i'm not gonna get that chaos back in a t3 map that's actually how the game goes there's not enough juice there's not enough multipliers going on in the amount of monsters versus the pack size versus the quantity and rarity it's just not there don't worry you'll get to full juice those maps later on for now just worry about trying to progress as fast as possible to get to that point where you can actually uh farm some end game content and that's when you're gonna start juicing all right now the only other thing i want to talk about in this video is basically going to be master missions now master well, missions in my opinion should be before. used pretty liberally you can pretty much use them at any time and the only exception to that is going to be xana so i'm going to go ahead and talk about xana uh, to fi to finish it off but all the other ones be it you know your um Einhar, your nico your nikos or your alvas or whatever really you can pretty much use at any point in time that you want uh now obviously you never really go back in map tiers so the white uh, the white missions can only apply to white maps you can't apply that to a red map so might as well use all of them during your progression right there's no reason to stockpile them you're not going to go back to to use them later on anyways so even if it's like a t2 map or a t3 map just use all of your master missions because guess what they're adding more monsters to your map for free unlike scarabs or things like that like sextants which actually have a cost these are free and they will literally just add more juice to your map for no cost and you're not going to need them later so might as well use them so i will use all of them for white and yellow maps at any point and even red maps i don't really care about them because they they uh the only one that i really care about is the alvas because i think alva is one of the best to juicing uh, actually, it's the best juicing mechanic in terms of uh, master missions by far. Uh, so those you're going to want to keep stockpile the red alvas. Everything else doesn't matter. Now, the only exception to that is going to be Xana. Now, the reason for that is because Xana actually uh, offers you basically maps, right? And you want to try to be strategic with when you actually use your Xanas. And what I recommend is to use your Xanas always at the highest possible tier of the map color that you're running so what i mean by that is if you're farming white maps those white xanas should pretty much always 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 be used in t5 maps if you're doing yellows t10s and of course for red maps it's a little bit different for red maps you pretty much want to use them anytime that you feel like your map pool is running low or you're about to have to go back down in tiers that's when you want to use her try to be strategic about it uh, but you definitely want to keep her for the highest tier possible at all times because the first Xana you encounter is going to be in a T3 map whenever you encounter the first Citadel, right? That's when you actually get your first Xana to show up. Now, after that, whenever you encounter Xanas, the idea with Xana missions is that she's basically like a shortcut to either getting through a different region which you haven't gotten uh, at that point so for example if you start with lex proxima you go through to lex Doris to get your first watchstone right now you have to get through lear arthrain well what's the easiest way to do that well the easiest way would probably be to be buying the map right but if you can't afford to buy the map or there's no maps being for sale or problems with the api there's so many reasons where you know you wouldn't be able to buy a map horizon orbs are your next best bet Horizon Orbs are going to turn the map into a different map tier that only can roll the natural map tier of the map. So if you're doing a T4, that'll be probably like somewhere in the outer region. That could get you into Lear Arthrain. But Xana could also you uh, could also offer you a, a, a master mission. And in the master mission, she will offer you a map in the Lear Arthrain, which is going to give you direct access without having to deal with anybody else. And, of course, without having to spend any currency. It's literally free. So that's how I use my Xana. I use her for two different things. First off, I use her at the very end of the, the map tier of the color of the map that I'm running to try to basically shortcut my way through the higher tier maps without basically any sort of investment. And I use her to unlock uh, or to access different parts of my atlas, which I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. Uh, so a really good way, for example, is when you do the leapfrog strategy, which is the video that I spoke about at the start, how to, you know, uh, speed run all 32 watchstones of your atlas. If you do that strategy, uh, you could get to the point where you have like 20 watchstones unlocked, but you don't even have the citadel in one of the regions. For example, you wouldn't have the citadel in Glenic Carnes. That would be a good time to actually go ahead and run a Xana 
and you know pick a map from Glenwich Carn so you don't actually have to make your way into the maps to try to unlock the citadel you can literally just do a Xana and boom there's your citadel a uh, pretty big shortcut so that's pretty much all I have to say I think about Atlas progression and of course master missions hopefully this helps you guys out um, when it comes to progressing your Atlas before I go though as always I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters so Johnny Michael Kluzi Zarashi Lero Gaikona Stefan Kunin Michael JW Player Scott Richard Justin Alex Ollie Matt Kevin Marcus Matthias Hayden Bitizen Axel and Acid Thank you guys all so much for the support. Hopefully this video is helpful. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.